Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Hector Gethner, we're both from the AI group and with the support of Guillem, who's our PhD student working on this project. S still too loud, no? Wait. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just start by giving a very brief introduction to, to uh, AI in general and AI planning in particular, which is the, the subfield of AI that we consider for this project. Then. Uh, I'll describe some of the recent advances in AI planning from our group and finally how this ties together with our Marie de Mestu project. Uh, so uh, AI in general is the, the, the area of computer science which is uh, uh, concerned with trying to uh, emulate the intelligent behavior in, in particular using computation, so using computers. So uh, you can say that understanding a behavior X or being able to emulate the behavior X is, is understanding how to generate this behavior use, using a computer. Uh, and uh, of course, X can be of many different types. So we can uh, able to solve a problem of some type. Uh, image recognition is usually considered part of AI, understanding what someone says. Uh, well, a joke, which is more uh, subtle no, than just understanding the, the, mean, the meaning of the words, uh, doing some task, etc. So, uh, in, in, the, in the recent years, AI has received a lot of attention in, in the media because of, of recent advances in, in many different fields. So now today, uh, systems are able to uh, recognize uh, speech, recognize images, uh, there's self-driving cars, which have a strong AI component. Um, there are systems that give recommendations to people that allow you to, to search for information easily. Uh, there's the IBM Watson, which is famous for winning the Jeopardy uh, uh, TV show program, but also is used now for other, for other uh, uses. Uh, Google purchased a company called DeepMind that, uh, that pioneered the uh, algorithms for learning how to play Atari video games. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. And the, the same company now recently developed an algorithm that uh, uh, plays a board game called Go that was able to beat the, the, one of the world's best players in a, in, a, in a highly, well, in, in Asia, this is a, an extremely popular game. So it was televised for millions and millions of people. Uh, so most of these advances, in fact, are based on, on machine learning. And so we think machine learning is important, and actually we, we, we do more and more machine learning in our group. Uh, but the, the work I'm going to talk about today goes, goes further in the sense that machine learning is limited, that well, the, 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 the main use of machine learning uh, is to associate it some stimulus that you, that you get with a response or a prediction of some type. Uh, well, this is sufficient to, to, uh, to produce many interesting applications, but uh, in several senses it's insufficient to, to uh, achieve some types of, of intelligent behavior. In particular, humans, when we learn, we, we learn by building models of the world around us. So. Uh, uh, for well, how the the uh, so when when if if I'm learning how to to navigate the the building of the department, for example, I, I have this mental model of how what the department looks like, and and uh, so these type of models are used in in many situations for generating behavior or uh, other tasks such as. Um, interpreting what, what other people or, or agents around us are doing, sorry. And for uh, understanding what is happening or going on in the world in different ways or to communicate with, with other people. So, and building models goes beyond what typical machine learning algorithms can do. So, so, so AI planning is the, is the formalism of intelligence, of artificial intelligence, which is model-based. So it's based on having uh, access to such models about how the world works. Uh, so the basic form of the, of, the, um, of the problem is that you have a set of variables uh, and a set of actions. These actions uh, affect the variables in some way. You have an initial situation. 
and uh, a goal situation that you want to achieve. And the, and the aim is to, to find a sequence of actions that map this initial state to the goal state. And the model is actually hidden in the sense in these actions. So, so the formalisms of this problem were uh, where you have to learn which actions to, to, to achieve, but the, in, in, this, in, the, in the formalism of AI planning, the actions, you know what the effect of the actions are. In, uh, in the base case, the actions are deterministic, so you know exactly what the effect is of, of each action. So even this base problem is, so even though this looks like uh, 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 a clear representation of, of this type of computational problem, it's actually very, com it's computationally intractable. So, so you can find, uh, it's easy to, to define small problems of this type that uh, for which the solution will take, uh, well, you cannot find the solution within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so, uh, and there are extensions that make the problem even harder. So you can uh, extend this by uh, having incomplete information about what, where, where you, what the values of the variables are. Uh, actions can be stochastic, so you don't know what the exact effect will be of each action. Uh, the, there might be costs of actions, and you want to minimize costs. There might be other agents in the, in the environment. Uh, so the example shown here is an example from, from uh, a classic example from the AI book, which is called The Wumpus World, where an agent starts in the, so the agent is this uh, uh, hunter or gold seeker in the, in the bottom left corner. He has to find a, a, a gold, uh, a stash of gold. And there are some pits where he can fall down, and there's a wumpus which will, will eat him, and he can't sense exactly where these objects are. So, so there's, some, there's some sensing actions that he can do, so he can sense whether uh, there's a breeze, there's a pit in the, in the cell next to him, or whether there's a stench from the wumpus which is also next to him. So then this problem becomes even harder because you have to reason about what if I go into the next cell, well, I might risk uh, running into an obstacle or trouble. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna so talk about some of the applications that we've been working on recently in the in the AI group, uh, and a little bit about the, the technology that's behind these applications. So uh, one uh, recent focus, like I like, that I mentioned before, is is video games. So. Uh, the, what we've been working on is the application of, of generic, so most of the work that we do in our group uh, is uh, generic in the sense we want, we want to develop algorithms that will work for a broad class of problems, not just for, for a single one. So uh, one example is using such generic algorithms to solve, uh, to, to control agents in, in video games. Uh, so why video games? Well. Um, and in particular, so there's a recent uh, AI competition called the General Video Game AI Competition. There's also been this focus, as I mentioned before, on Atari video games, which with today's standards have uh, uh, pretty awful graphics. So, so why are we interested in, in solving this problem? So it's actually, it turns out that this, this problem is computationally very difficult. So humans are very good at doing it. So, uh, in a sense, it's a, it's a good uh, way to showcase the strength of algorithms if we're able to emulate or come close to human behavior in, the, in these tasks. So I'm just going to show um, a couple of videos um, that... So this is a video game called Sokoban, where you have to push boxes around to... Well, you have to push boxes and bring them to... Uh, um, to a final location, and it has a <laughs> epic music, but okay. stop. So, <laughs> so it has a, a strong uh, planning component because if you push the box in the wrong direction or in the wrong order, then you'll you'll not be able to solve the the problem. This is a, a video of uh, of these algorithms playing Atari video games. So this is. Uh, you can tell from the early 80s how to drive a, a car. So, so at each point, you have to take an action, decide which action to take, whether to go left or right, or whether to 
possibly speed down. This is the classic game of breakout. We have to move this uh, platform to, to bounce the ball, etc. So I'm not going to show you the, the whole video. Okay, and uh, one of the so one of the entries of, of our of people related to our group won the, the the general video game competition last year using an algorithm that's called uh, uh, YB Cribber. Uh, we also work in in robotics. So in robotics, the there's um, a common problem in robotics is what's called motion planning, which is basically to decide how to bring a robot actuator actuator to to a certain location. Uh, and so there's a lot of work on how to, to do motion planning. But what if we give uh, the robot a, a high-level task of, of bringing objects uh, to a certain location or having to, to stack objects in a certain way, or, or like this so Sokoban problem of deciding in which order to do things? Well, uh, then we have this aspect of task planning, which is this high-level symbolic reasoning about in which order we have to do things. So, uh, and how to combine these two is not, is not uh, um, a problem that, 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 that is, has been solved. So uh, one of the lines of work of our group recently has been to try to combine, to, to, to develop algorithms for combining task and motion planning. So it's a high level task that the robot has to solve. Well, once you decide in which order to, to move, uh, objects, then you have to, to navigate or, or do motion planning to reach that object, etc. So our approach is to integrate these two, these two planning techniques. And do, so we do both, um, both uh, task and motion planning in parallel. Is this the one? Okay. So, so in this case, for example, the goal is for this robot to bring a ball to the upper right corner. And as you can see, there are some obstacles in the way, so the robot has to decide in which order to move these obstacles in order to reach its objective. And once it's decided in, in which order to move the obstacles, it then has to get to that, to that ball, for example, and, and, uh, and grab it and then onto it and move it somewhere else. In this case, this, uh, the goal is to get this actuator aligned with the, the green line. So again, there's some obstacles in the way, so it, you have to do this task planning to decide in which order to, to remove this object and, and reach your, your objective. Okay. Okay, so and, and the very recent project that, that we've just started is a, a third type of application is for doing organic synthesis. So to model uh, real world organic synthesis problems uh, as planning problems. So, and, and in part this is possible because of the expressivity of, the, of the, the novel types of planning formalisms that we've developed in the group. So this is uh, potentially in, in collaboration with uh, researchers in, in Canada, I believe. Um, so, so I'm going to just say something about what kind of technology are behind these, these applications. So, so one uh, recent uh, technology that we've developed is something called functional strips. So the, the planning problems, the type of planning uh, models that I've described are described using something called, well, it's propositional planning. It's described using binary or prop propositional variables. So functional strips is an extension of this. Which, is, which allows to express uh, more complex ty types, of, uh, types of problems that include integer and real value variables and different types of constraints that you put on, on the problem, et cetera. Uh, and the idea is well, all to also uh, uh, accompany this with algorithms that are effective for solving this type of problems. And so this allows uh, researchers to, to, to bridge this gap between the, 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 the standard planning models, which are poor in, in, in the sense that some type, types of problems are not modeled effectively using the standard planning tools. So, so we, we, this, this more expressive model can, can uh, help us solve uh, real more problems that are more real world-like. So just as has happened in other fields, such as uh, satisfiability or, or uh, control, uh, per, per, sorry, constraint satisfaction problems. 
so another technology we've been developing recently is something that we call planning programs. So it's planning prog programs allow, is a compact representation for uh, describing abstract plans for solving certain classes of problems, not just a sim single, single problem. So if, if we have, for example, a, uh, the problem of moving two balls somewhere, so we have to pick up two balls and move them to, to a bin. The classical plan will include two actions for picking up a ball, two actions for dropping a ball, etc. But a high-level plan that, that includes a loop will, will work for any number of balls and any number of, potentially any number of locations of balls because uh, if, the, if these abstract actions know exactly how to perform something like grasping a ball, so, so here you see that, well, the program says to grasp a ball, drop it in the bin where it's supposed to go, then choose the next ball, and as long as there exists the next ball, uh, then you go to the beginning of the program again and, and repeat. Okay, so, uh, so one of our papers in this, in this area was uh, just recently awarded with a distinguished paper award at, uh, at Ichikai, the main AI conference, which is to take place in a couple of weeks. Um, okay, so, so I'm going to now just talk about how these technologies tie together with what we plan to do in the, in the Marida Mesto project. Uh, so, so the idea here of, of our project is to, to increase the, so we developed this set of planning tools in our group that are useful for solving many types of problems. So, but uh, at least until present, we haven't been done such a good job of publishing these tools, making them available to the to the public. Uh, I mean, there's the so 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 our goal of this project is to enhance the availability of our tools, to make them open to other researchers to use, publicize them to so that people know where to to find them. Uh, so we're working in on one hand on general software development guidelines for the projects that within the group so that, so that we use best practices such as I mean, documenting code, uh, testing code, integrating with, with existing systems, etc., packing packaging code so that they can be downloaded as units. Uh, so our main algorithms that we developed are, so now we're in the process, this, this has started already to uh, document and, and uh, bring these packages to repositories. So have to have a central repository for our research group where people can go and download our tools. Uh, also, this, this focus on reproducibility. So we want to, to make it easy for people, to other researchers, to try to reproduce the results that we publish in our papers. So to, by, uh, by, a group, by packages, packaging things in, a, in an easy-to-use manner so that, for example, we can, you can, many of the researchers in our group, in our area, use Ubuntu, so we package them as Ubuntu packages, or as Docker images, which allows you to run experiments on a virtual machine without even downloading the, the software on your own machine. Uh, and, of, like I said, of facilitating reproducibility to, so in, in our area, in, in the model-based, um, formalism of, of, uh, of planning. Uh, it's not so da data-centered, so it's, data is, 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 is instead in the benchmarks that we use. There's a large set of benchmarks. There's a planning competition that's been running for, for many years. There's a lot of um, examples of problems expressed in the way that I've talked about. Uh, to publish also experiment scripts so that people can, can run exactly the same experiments that we have run, etc. Distribute results in the same way that that, soft, that we distribute software. Uh, another part of the project is to help people use uh, these, soft, these algorithms that we've developed for uh, task and motion planning for robotics. So there's a, for robotics, there's a, an operating system that's widely used today by robotics researchers called ROS, the Robot Operating System. So our objective here is to, to take the planning technology and make it compatible with ROS so that people that do robotics can download our software, plug in it into ROS, which, which they're familiar with, and then run planning algorithms to, to, do, to do this high-level task planning for their problems. So and there's, 
This can be combined with, uh, there's a simulator, Wadex simulator called uh, Gazebo, that in w which is very precise, you can, uh, that simulates collisions, uh, all kinds of uh, um, detailed effects of, of robot actuator, et cetera, where you can test this, this task planning uh, software. Uh, another tool that we've been working on, so the, there's the, the planning algorithms, or sorry, planning problems are usually expressed in something called the planning domain description language, or PDDL. Uh, so in our group, we do, we, a lot of our uh, <coughs> algorithms recently have been what we call compilation-based approaches. So we download, uh, we parse an, a problem expressed in PDDL. We do some processing, and then we generate another problem in PDDL so that we can use uh, standard planning algorithms to solve the problem. And so we needed a tool for that, that can do both parsing and generation of PDDL. So this, and, and standard tools for doing this were not very usable. So, uh, so the, the motivation for, uh, for developing this tool is that it should be easy to use. It should be easy to debug PDDL. So if you try to parse a pr planning problem in PDDL, it should tell you exactly where the problem is, which is not the case with, with previous approaches. Uh, we want it to be universal in the sense that all these different uh, variants of planning should be, parse, should be possible to pass to this tool uh, or to generate using this tool. Uh, well, finally, the, um, this is work by, by Vicenz Gomez, which, uh, which is also part of, of our project on developing cognitive robotics architectures and also this to, to facilitate high-level uh, cognitive planning for, for ro robots. So and this is a collaboration with uh, both the Netherlands and I believe London as well. Okay, so, so that's really it. And I, mean, I would like to thank not only people in this uh, project, but also the people in, that work in our, in our group. So, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Anders? Yeah. Yes. Um, thanks for your presentation. Being born in the 70s, I used to play these Atari games, um, and I was wondering um, what information is provided to the algorithms? Is it just uh, the bunch of pixels that would be provided to our brain, or how do you encode this information? Right, so in the case of, the, of DeepMind, this company that worked on this, they work on the raw pixel information. So, but in, the, in, in fact, there's uh, an emulator that passes both the pixel information and the internal RAM memory of the Atari, which is quite small. It's, I uh, believe, uh, 1,024 uh, bytes. So, so our algorithms actually, we, see, we, we don't do image recognition in our group. Then so far, we've been working with the internal RAM memory for making decisions. So then there's 18 different actions you can take. So given the, the current RAM memory, you have to decide which, which action to take. But in the RAM memories, this information might be decoded in a strange way, right? So you have to learn yes. how to interpret that. Yeah, yeah, so you have to automatically determine how to interpret this. Because if our brain would be presented with a RAM memory, we would probably not be successful in playing, I guess. <laughs> right, yes, you're right. And actually, some totally relevant things are encoded in the memory, such yeah. as music or things that are not relevant for, for selecting which mm -hmm. action to take. So that makes it hard. So okay. we're actually, we, we're trying now to collaborate with, we've been collaborating with Gloria to try to, to do image recognition first and then be able to, uh, to, to uh, make decisions based on the objects that you see in the, in the image. <laughs>